Thirdly, we look at the pressure of a gas. Now, pressure of a gas and concentration is similar. We know that the higher the pressure on the gases, the higher the reaction rate will be. So explaining it using the collision theory is the following. Uh, increasing the pressure by either decreasing the volume of the container or by adding reacting gases to the container leads to an increase in the number of collisions between either particles in a smaller space or particles in the container, causing a chance of more effective collisions. Fourthly, we look at the temperature. We know that the higher the temperature, the higher the rate of the reaction. So to explain this using the collision theory, if the temperature is higher, we need to refer to the increased kinetic energy of the particles. So the particles collide more often and with energy higher than the activation energy. So that leads to more effective collisions. I want us to look at the effect of a change in temperature on the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve. Now, if we can remember, the curve looks like this. Now, let that curve be the curve at a lower temperature. Let's insert a curve at a higher temperature. You'll see that at a higher temperature, the whole curve shifts to the right. So if I can fill in the activation energy somewhere here, you'll see that at the lower temperature, this represents the number of particles in the reaction mixture that will have enough energy to react. When the temperature is higher, more particles will now have enough energy, energy higher than the activation energy, in order to react. And if we use the collision theory, the reason why the reaction will take place faster at a higher temperature is because the, collision, the particles are moving faster, so they collide more vigorously, and more of them will have activation energy, or energy higher than activation energy. So the reaction, the effective reactions, effective collisions will happen faster. Last, we, we get to the catalyst, and we need, need know that it increases the rate of the reaction. But how does it increase the rate of the reaction? There is a video you may watch. It increases the reaction by lowering the activation energy. Let's use the collision theory to explain this. Adding a catalyst supplies another route for the reaction by supplying a surface for the reaction to take place. And so it lowers the activation energy so that more particles will have enough energy to collide effectively. Let's look at the effect of a catalyst on the energy profile as well as on the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve. The energy profile we know from grade 11, that if you add a catalyst, then it lowers the activation energy. So this represents the activation energy with a catalyst. It's clear that that is much lower than the activation energy without a catalyst, the original activation energy. On the Maxwell-Boltzmann curve, if that's the activation energy without the catalyst, 
and that represents the molecules with enough energy to react. The activation energy with the catalyst will be lower. So although nothing changes in connection with the energy of the particles, more particles will now have enough energy to react effectively. Lastly, I want to discuss something that is rather um, new and that is called catalytic converters. Is it a friend or a foe? Now in internal combustion engines there are non-toxic gases coming out like nitrogen and carbon dioxide and water vapor formed in the engine cylinders while the fuel reacts with oxygen. Unfortunately, there is also like toxic fumes coming out, like your nitrogen oxides, your carbon monoxide, um, and some uncombusted hydrocarbons. So what happens with these gases? If they enter the atmosphere, some of them are highly reactive, so they're called toxic, and um, some of them uh, needs to be changed as they also cause global warming they need to be changed so um, engineers have developed catalytic converters they use platinum or rhodium or palladium which are very expensive metals to convert the nitrogen oxides through a process of a reduction to nitrogen and oxygen. Good thing. To convert the carbon monoxide through a process of oxidation to carbon, mon to carbon dioxide, which is not toxic, but also increases the atmospheric temperature. And the uncombusted hydrocarbons, they also change that through oxidation to carbon dioxide and water vapor. Now the pain is, although the modern cars are uh, fitted um, with catalytic converters, these converters are rendered um, ineffective if your car's engine are not kept in pristine um, condition. It's also not um, it doesn't last uh, uh, forever. To replace a catalytic converter can cost anything between 500 to 2,200 uh, dollars, which is hopelessly too expensive for the average person's pocket. Next, I'll show you a graph that. Um, um, shows you the effectiveness of the catalyst, catalytic converters. Here is a graph showing you the effectiveness of catalytic converters. You'll see that you get three-way and two-way um, converters. And um, I think it's quite clear that um, the converter changes um, the situation of emissions of dangerous gases or toxic gases into the atmosphere. I hope that you have enjoyed this presentation. You are welcome to do the exercises in the textbook and then um, talk to me uh, if you have any problem. Thank you very much.